Hello and welcome back to the YouTube studio here at the Berlin Global Dialogue. I'm Jack Kelly from TLDR News and I'm happy to, jo I'm happy to be joined by Jens Spahn. How are you doing today? All fine, thank you. It's a Friday. Yes, uh, <laughs> it's good <laughs> so news. It's good news. After two weeks of parliamentary sessions, actually, Yeah. Uh, it's good to... Well, it's nice to have you here. Hopefully it's a little bit more relaxing. It is. Um, hopefully. Hopefully. See. <laughs> we'll see what my questions are. Um, let's start with something that um, Chancellor Schultz had to say yesterday in his main session. He commented on the state of the world and the fact we we're entering a new multipolar phase. Do you agree with this analysis? And what do you think that Europe and Germany should be doing to react to that? Well, in general, what we, what we see is that obviously there is the US and China. Mm -hmm. Uh, in a, uh, in a, if you put it positively, it's a competition. If you if you put it differently, it's 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 kind of mm -hmm. fuship, perhaps even uh, or more. Um, and and Germany and the European Union are somehow not in between. That's not true. Of course, we are uh, uh, transatlantic partners with the US, but yeah. at the same time, we ha do have very close economic ties with with China, mm. and all sides have have benefited from it. So we we see that we need to reposition uh, ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, I think that we need to, to find a new common base within the transatlantic partnership, for example, when it comes to trade agreements, to strengthen it. Mm -hmm. um, and at the same time, uh, uh, we, we, we can't uh, deal with China the way the US does. Yes. Uh, because we are uh, more depending, as, 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 uh, for example, as Germany, uh, on, on, the, uh, on the economic um, uh, relation with China. Mm -hmm. So yes, it's a world that is actually about to, to, to re balance, reshape. I mean, we, we need to have a focus on what's going on in Africa, South America mm -hmm. as well, the so-called swinging states that yeah. might swing from one side to the other uh, uh, regarding the issue. So it's kind of new world order, yes. And with that kind of incoming, are you optimistic about the opportunities that presents or do you think it's mainly a challenge and a concern? It's definitely uh, a challenge. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, what it is now, it's 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 kind of disorder, isn't mm -hmm. it? I mean, with war in Europe again, yeah. uh, brutally every day. We no, never should forget it. Just two hours away uh, from here by airplane, um, um, and it's times like this when when things are changing on the world. Um, it's still still open where it goes. Is mm -hmm. it is it better afterwards or worse? I would say for right now, uh, it's it's this going to be a very difficult twenties. Yes. Uh, uh, everyone expected another, another golden twenties <laughs> like hundred years ago. Yeah. Uh, but we do remember how these golden twenties ended. Yes. Uh, in, in World War II, and I would say these twenties with the pandemic um, recession in, in Germany, at least in Europe, a very difficult uh, economic situation, migration, mm -hmm. uh, big topic here, um, and polarization in societies in the U.S. as well as in Europe. Uh, these these twenty. Uh, 20 is going to be very, very challenging for sure, and it's still open where it goes. And you talk about the economic impact and the economic decisions that Europe is able to make versus America. And in the US, we've seen a rise in protectionism. The Inflation Reduction Act has fundamentally changed the US domestic economy. And that's obviously something that the US, given its economic power, is able and willing to do. But how do you think these changes will impact the German and the European economies? And what decision making can we make to ensure that Europe continues to thrive going forward? Well, in general, for, for I don't know, 10, 20 years um, in this century, the first ones, we, ha we have seen actually a world that got more and more globalized. Mm -hmm. And actually, everyone was benefiting from it. Hundreds of millions of people got out of total poverty in India and in China and many other, other areas of the world. And we all somehow benefited. And now we see that two, the two biggest economic regions um, and powers, the US and China, for different reasons, with different tools, yeah. but actually with the same effect, uh, are becoming more protectionistic. Uh, and that, of course, is affecting uh, us all. Mm. And we as a European Union and Germany, I mean, we are the first biggest economy on the world still. Mm -hmm. Um, but very much depending on, on exports. We don't have a domestic market like the US or China. Um, so for us, it's very important to, at one hand, still promote free trade mm -hmm. and globalization, because I still do think that's actually the best for the world if we did more of it. But at the same time, to react on what China and the US do. Mm -hmm. And so, for example, when it comes to 
chip making, semiconductors, um, when it comes to, to, to other technologies, um, um, we, we become kind of protecti uh, protective, mm -hmm. more protecting uh, 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 our, our technologies uh, uh, and industries too. Um, but I find important is that we need to define certain areas where it makes sense because of sovereignty mm -hmm. to not to be too dependent on China and in some areas on, on the US as well. Um, uh, and what I do see right now is that every industry says, we are very important for your sovereignty, yeah. so please do subsidize us. Mm. And that would be the wrong way. So you need to be very clear in defining what are the technologies, what are the industries we yes. do need to support to uh, be less dependent or independent even. And at the same time, where does diversification, free trade still make sense? And this rise in protectionism is clearly one economic concern that faces Europe and Germany. Do you think there's any other big trends and headwinds that are concerning for the economies? Um, obviously, AI mm -hmm. is. Um, we, we do have a real problem in Germany, especially, that we haven't had a, an increase in productivity for almost five years now. Mm -hmm. So though we, are, uh, though we have as many people working as never before, mm -hmm. 46 million, um, at the same time, uh, the GDP is not really growing. Yeah. Um, so productivity uh, just is not growing either, it's not increasing. And AI, um, automatization, digitization, of course, is an opportunity mm -hmm. to increase productivity for an aging society. Yes. Germany is one of the uh, 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 oldest societies on the world after mm -hmm. Japan. Um, and so that's, that's what we do need is more investments in that area and being more open. And at the same time, uh, this government and many in, in, in Europe try to get all the money that is invested into, into climate protection. That mm -hmm. is okay and important, but we should not forget uh, the area of, of the increase of productivity. Mm -hmm. and, and that brings us uh, to, uh, to the challenges of AI. And we already see again the US and China uh, just ahead. Yeah. And you mentioned the kind of demographic shifts, the aging populations in Germany and Europe as a whole. That's obviously going to change pressures, both economic and when it comes to healthcare. So when we're looking at kind of health policy and the balance of priorities there, and we're looking at the aging populations, do you think we're going to see a shift in health policy and the approach that's taken? What kind of shift is, are you referring to? As in, with an aging population, the cost and the burden... Of course, the, cost, the is cost will increase in all European countries. I mean, all European countries, the, le the US less so, mm -hmm. but all U European countries uh, face this challenge, uh, challenge of, of, of aging. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and there's only one solution, mm -hmm. after all. You, you, you can't solve it by, by cutting any costs. Sure. Uh, you just can solve it by growth. Mm -hmm. You know, there are too many people, if you look at the uh, books that are, are, are sold uh, in Germany in the bestseller books, uh, it's, it's all about degrowth. Mm. Like we don't need that growth anymore and we really need new technologies. And I say, look, we are an aging society. Of course, we do need economic growth. Mm. How would you pay for pensions, for health care, for elderly care if there is not, a, again, an increase in productivity? There are less people that need to produce a bigger GDP. The only way is more productivity. Uh, and at the same time, you do need this growth. Uh, to keep the social welfare system uh, alive. There is no, for me, there is no other uh, uh, solution uh, than economic growth. And if you take that, you just see uh, we don't have that at all uh, right now, which is for the first time in 10 years, mm -hmm. uh, there is no economic growth in Germany uh, because of structural problems. Yeah. Uh, we are not yet the sick men of Europe again, mm -hmm. like the economist said 20 years ago. Yeah. But I would say we, we have an infection. And it's still open if it is a mild one or it will be a very, very heavy one. Mm -hmm. uh, if there are no political actions taken, it will be a very, very heavy one. And finally, on the main stage a moment ago, Larry Fink commented on the fact that he thought there was a lack of hope in the world at the moment. Do you think the world is lacking hope right now? And if so, what could remedy that? Well, I, I, of course... I'm very much focused on, on the debate here in, in mm. Germany and in Europe. And I, I would agree that 
if, if you just take your WhatsApp groups, you <laughs> might be in, yeah. and you see all, everything that is posted, you could be uh, depre you could become depressive. Mm -hmm. uh, so actually, it's it's all getting worse uh, if you just read that. And at the same time, I, I try to to tell people when I'm in the country and in in, in, in in discussions, I, I say yes, it's a very difficult time right mm -hmm. now. Yes, this is uh, the twenty is going to be very very challenging and difficult, but at the same time. Uh, this is a very strong country and a very strong continent and, and with the technology we have, with the infrastructure we have, with the education system we have, with the social cohesion we have, which is by the way a difference to the US, mm -hmm. I would say, uh, 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 when it comes to uh, uh, volunteers engaging in, in, in society, for example, with all we have and the geography we have, I do like Australia, but there's a different mm -hmm. geography. Um, w w actually, the starting point is still very, very good. It's yeah. still a strong country, still a strong continent, mm -hmm. but if not uh, the right decisions taken, mm -hmm. Uh, it really can uh, go down very quickly. Mm -hmm. So the question is, if 2030 we are still this strong uh, continent, this strong country, I think it is possible, mm -hmm. you know, if the, if the simple narrative, the best is yet to come, mm -hmm. doesn't work anymore, yeah. why should you get up in the morning? Okay. So actually, yes, I, I, I do agree with Larry Fink. Uh, then um, uh, right now we, we, we start to have a kind of self-fulfilling prophecy. Everyone is talking it more and more mm -hmm. down to the ground. Uh, I would say we need to tackle the problems. We need to put them on the table properly, mm -hmm. which is not done often enough. But then they can be solved yeah. by political decisions. And then you can have a narrative that 2030 is even has a chance to be better than today. Mm -hmm. That's the only reason uh, or the only way you can get people uh, to, to go to, to change with you. Absolutely. Well, hopefully we can meet again in 2030 back in Berlin. Perhaps and we'll before be able, that. Hopefully. <laughs> we'll um, and hopefully we'll be able to see that progress and that hope re-emerge. Re yes. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. It's been very enjoyable talking with you. Thanks. <laughs>